Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and we are in Olympiad workout series and this problem has been pending for quite a some time so apologies and this is from OPHO 2020 round one that is online physics Olympiad 2020 that happened recently and this is a problem that has been requested by many uh, of my subscribers in the comments section right so this is a problem number 38 me and me my crush is the uh, funny uh, title for the problem, right? It's actually about a uh, two electron interaction, right? With one electron thrown uh, in the presence of the other. And also there is a uniform electric field external one that is present, okay? So in case you want to try the problem before going ahead with the solution, this is the formal wording of the question, right? So um, pause the video here, try this one out. And this has got a very good uh, JE advanced concept also embedded in it, even though this is a Olympiad question. So it's not very straightforward, but I think people who would crack this question would feel very satisfied and exhilarated. Okay, so let me go through the formal wording. Two electrons are in uniform electric field E is equal to E naught, value is given. One electron is at the origin and other 10 meter above the other electron. So these two circles represent the particles called electrons. Okay. So the electron at the origin is moving with a speed of 10 meter per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the line joining the two initially. And the other electron is at rest at t equal to zero. Find the minimum distance between electrons and you may neglect the relativistic effects. So this is a very important uh, assumption that we'll be using during the problem. Okay. So uh, again, pause the video, try it out and come back to look at the solution. So we'll first cover the concepts involved and then we'll go through the solution that is required. Okay, so here are the concepts. So the first and foremost, what we are supposed to look at is that I'll imagine a, uh, another problem situation in which the two electrons are actually left on their own. No one is projected initially. And there is a uniform electric field as shown in the figure that is actually existing, let's suppose. Then uh, apart from the interactive forces uh, between the two electrons, repulsive force, this electric field will produce a uniform force during their travel, right? E, E naught divided by M and E, E naught divided by M as shown in the figure. Then the minimum distance calculation between them will not get affected by this E naught. Whatever minimum distance that you will end up having uh, without E naught and with E naught would be the same is the first claim I'm making. I think you will understand because that this particular acceleration component that you will end up having apart from the repulsive force would always remain constant. So if this acceleration moves this by some distance over and above the other acceleration effect, this would also move by the same distance in every dt seconds. So the minimum distance calculation would not get affected. Yes, path will get affected, but the minimum distance between the two will not get affected even if I don't assume the presence of E0. That's a very, very important observation that you should have made at the start of the question. So the second point is we can ignore the E0 bar value in the question for the minimum separation. If trajectory was asked, it is important, but minimum separation between the two, it won't involve E naught. So as we move along, now in the third point as a concept, let's try to uh, check how now I've removed, you could see from the second point, I've removed E naught. There is no E naught in my problem anymore. Okay, right. Now I'll try to check ground frame versus electron frame rough reference, how it looks like in the motion. Okay, so for the ground frame, as you could see, uh, one electron is projected with a speed u as uh, given in the question. And this capital F and capital F uh, are the repulsive forces on the free body diagram of this uh, electrons. Okay, so value of F should be K into E square divided by R square. Okay, K is one by four pi epsilon naught. Now look at the same figure in the electron frame, which has been thrown, right? So if this observer sits on this electron and watches the other one, he has to reverse this velocity and put this as a relative velocity. I think this is pretty clear. Not only that, apart from this real force that acts, there would be a pseudo force due to this accelerated frame of reference. And since both the electrons are identical, the net force, including real force and pseudo force becomes 2F, which would be writable as K into 2E into E divided by R square. Okay, right. So which means you could feel that if you ask this electron, how is it feeling? It would say I am under the influence of a uh, force which is equivalent to thinking this charge is at fixed at the origin and but the charge replaced with minus 2e. Can you see that? Right. So that's what I have written here. As seen from the reference of the initially projected electron, the other electron feels it's under the action of a fixed charge of minus 2e. Right. And from this reference, I will use the 
angular momentum and mechanical energy conservation in the new reduced problem. So I have reduced two things here. In the previous slide, I have removed the ele electric field, external electric field. And in this slide, I'm claiming that I will solve this problem as if the charge which is projected is fixed and the other charge feels that it is under the influence of a twice the fixed charge. Okay, right. So, and why is this allowed? I'll tell you why it is allowed. Here in the question, the relativistic effects are neglected. Okay, otherwise, what would have happened? In the moving frame effects, both minimum distance. Uh, will get affected that is due to length contraction if you have studied basics of relativity the frames change uh, especially in accelerated frames of reference you would end up having a length contraction effect okay so that is ignored in this problem and also the field that was externally being ignored will also get transformed when you move in a particular frame the e will get transformed to a new e and there will be a b that could be all uh, obviously be present in the new frame so all these effects have been neglected because of the statement he mentioned in the question so with all this uh, ruled out now this will become my problem of contention in the next slide so concentrate on this we are going to solve this part so moving on to the next slide finally we reduce the problem to this being fixed can you see this is a fixed charge here on the thick picture please concentrate minus 2e and mass m the other one is projected this way with an angle theta naught that he mentioned is uh, in the question 30 degrees okay right and then this yellow colored one would be that path traveled by this electron due to the repulsion from this electron okay not electron minus 2e charge so at a position of minimum distance the velocity vector of this electron would be perpendicular to the line joining the two electrons it's obvious okay so otherwise it won't be called as minimum distance the value of dr by dt should be zero okay right so from this position to this position i will first of all write angular momentum conservation which would be simply from here it is m u r where capital r is the original distance and small r is the minimum distance okay so this would become simple product of mbr since r is the requirement i'll uh, write the value of the variable v in terms of r for my further use this is the equation number one as promised to you the next equation i'll write is mechanical energy conservation of this electron from this fixed charge so initial energy is half m u square plus this energy, which is potential form of energy, right, minus 2k e square divided by Kepler should be equal to the kinetic energy here, plus again the potential energy term here. I have marked the variable required in yellow. As you could see, this is the variable that you require. So this V has to be replaced here by substituting 1 into and I'll rearrange this in the form of a quadratic in 1 by r. You could see this would be a 1 by r square term. So I brought it here after substitution. And this would be 1 by r term that I brought it here. And this entire thing would be a constant. And I also multiplied the entire thing with 2 so that these halves are removed. Now you have a quadratic expression. So the root of 1 by r or the uh, one of the roots of 1 by r would be minus b plus or minus root of b square minus 4ac by 2a, right? Therefore, r would be the inverse of that. So I've, for my reference, considered this as a quadratic expression with co coefficients a, b, and c. And r value should be the inverse of that square root, whatever that you have, right? Not square root, root. So minus b, this I substituted nicely and you will end up getting this. By the time I arrived at this answer, my suggestion, if you had been writing this particular exam, would be to not arrive at this answer in this format. Look, very bulky you should have solved for the numerical calculations here itself right here itself you should have written some number and these numbers entire thing all numericals are given it's better you write down the things in numericals so that by the time you arrive here this would be pure numerical substitutions okay so that would be my advice i realized it once i solved it then i used calculator and then i ended up getting at this particular answer okay so i hope you like this one this is a very important concept of sitting on one particle and watching the other and useful also in case of gravitation chapter in future wherein one planet is moving with respect to another planet and you want to apply Kepler's laws but Kepler's laws are valid for one of them being fixed so you can solve the problems using the reference frame of the moving object so we'll come up with more questions in the form of gravitation also in that regard okay so um, in case you have liked this please go through the other playlists also pathfinder solution series is already very famous result series is very informative you need to go through them aats select series takes all the important questions from the previous aats of different institutes and also 
there are uh, JE advanced and JE main solutions that I'm working out on. So all the links of the playlists are in the description below. Please try to go through them. If you are new, there are more than 90 videos already there. There's a lot of content that you need to uh, go through, all right? Instead of waiting for new videos, I think you should take time to go through all the videos that have already posted. A lot of information, especially if you are writing your JE advanced exam this year, okay? So in case you like them, please do share the content with others and subscribe to my channel and um, try to uh, encourage students to subscribe to my channel, right? So that will grow as a family and I will be more motivated to bring more videos and content to you. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.